Okay, this should be number four. This is radiation. I was going to kind of go right into wars, but this radiation thing came up, so I'll go here first. Um, of course, I these videos sort of are pointing towards a spiritual manifestation in the uh, our material world here of spirits that are malevolent. They have do not have our best interest in mind, and uh, this nuclear industry basically goes to prove that. But what I'm going to get started with is nothing is un random, and nothing is is just random. Nothing, everything is on purpose. Everything is planned. This was all planned. Now, with all the um, nuclear, um, if you don't know what Fukushima is, shame on you. It's your responsibility. It, as an American, it's a responsibility to know as a caring American. If you don't know, then you're not watching this video, so I don't even care. Um, this is an extinction uh, level event for the Pacific Ocean, and it'll go up the chain as radiation does. Radiation is decay. It attaches itself. It strips the atoms, and it starts a irreversible cycle of decay. Anything it touches. It does a lot more stuff too. We're going to get into that in a minute. Now at Fukushima, of course, unimaginable radiation levels detected inside Fukushima reactor. And uh, of course the um, the uh, Japanese folks, the newspapers, I read all these articles, um, they're saying it's nothing new. The um, radiation levels of 530 sieverts, which is deadly, deadly, deadly. You can't even fly a helicopter over that because it will fry every fucking thing from a great distance. And um, the highest level of sieverts ever recorded per hour at Chernobyl were 300. Probably still that high because, you know, all they did at Chernobyl was build a big sarcophagus and cover the whole goddamn thing. They never got in there to remove any of that molten material, or I call it glassified material, because it was glassified when the molten material came in contact with sand and melted the sand and glassified the whole goddamn thing. But it's still highly unstable. They don't know what the fuck they're going to do with it. You know, they just don't know, so they'll leave it there. They just don't fucking know. We don't have the technology. And we don't have the technology, technology to clean this up. But this was on purpose. Nobody cared about having the technology to clean this up because they don't care. Look, they're going to kill us off anyway. They figure if there's a, something happens, look, it just helps them out. And plus it releases tons and just... No, I can't say tons. All I can say is amounts that are not able to be recorded. You can't record the amounts because nobody knows between the... The, the nuclear testing from the 50s and 60s and, and, and 70s and, and the nuclear experiments and the uh, accidents that have occurred that, from that time for the last 70, 75 years. Um, so many elements have been released into the environment, they don't even know, they can't measure them, they're unmeasurable. So there's a lot of this stuff out there. A lot of this stuff is man-made from the fission process, or it's a result of the fission process, it's not man-made. It's just a result of the fission process. We didn't know what the fuck was going to happen when we did this stuff. When they started experimenting on this, you know, they didn't know. It, it, everything's been a slow process of learning. And now we got a goddamn, uh, we got melted material. I mean, this is not a little bit of melted material. The uh, What's funny is some of the Fukushima videos you see from Japan, they'll have this little tiny bit of material that dropped on the ground like a little drop, raindrop or something. But it's not as big as a fucking house. It's tons and tons and tons of this material and anything it comes in contact with is then highly radioactive. That's why they have the tanks of water there. And they keep pouring water on this. They finally admitted to that. They, the water, groundwater just seeps right through to the ocean. They can't stop that. But they pump water on top of this material. They don't know where it is. They just got to keep it wet. They figure if it gets dry it's going to blow up. And I kind of joked about that. All they have to do to find this really is stop putting water on it and they'll find it in a worse way. But this is an, an environment, 530 sieverts, nothing lives there. Not a worm, not a cockroach. They said that after a nuclear bomb, it was said once that um, the only living organism would be the cockroach, which is not, which may be true there in, a, in a, an atomic blast. But here, it, a cockroach won't live. Nothing will live. Not an earthworm, not a fucking one-celled amoeba. Nothing. Nothing. It is barren, it devoid of life. It's like the breath of God was taken away from that area. It's not doesn't exist there anymore. Doesn't exist and that's what is wanted for the entire earth. That's what is in store for the entire earth. And left unless people wake up then they won't. 
So yeah, I'm just going to go for a little, go along for the ride. Oh yeah, just lovely, just fucking lovely. And um, the reason for these nuclear uh, energy plants is just really their bomb factories to make the most destructive, deadly substance and turn it into a bomb on Earth. It's it's just a race to make the deadliest substance, and I think they found it. Now this is um, about, about, let me go into this. A lot of elements. This is a new element, newer, or 2012. But they keep adding elements to the periodic tables of elements because we keep creating them. And when they're, this was not in abundant supply. They've only made a little bit of this, but enough to put it on the tables. Now this is um, nihil. I can't pronounce these fucking words. Nihilonium or or um, you you know, unitrinium. Um, this was developed by the Japanese. It's been they've been in process of de developing it for a long time, but uh, one year after the Fukushima accident, they finally um, were able to um, give it a name and a number, and an atomic number. And um, but this stuff, they don't tell you much about it. It has no use except for weapons and um, science studies. But um, they say that this stuff, they've never made more than a couple atoms of this stuff, and decays it like the, the most stable. Um, element in it is is a uh, is another isotope. Where is it? It's up here somewhere. Anyway, nihonium two eight six, and it's uh, it's it's stable for twenty seconds. It has a half life of twenty seconds. That's not really stable, not real stable. But um, they say that this is the stuff, man. This is the stuff. You make a bomb out of this, it's it's going to be the mother of all bombs. This stuff right here. This is what they're trying to develop. And they say they haven't really developed any more than just a couple atoms full, but we don't know. And there's a few more new elements, too, they, they came up with by bombarding different uh, elements with uh, these fast neutrons. Highly radioactive. Fucking highly radioactive. And, you know, um, it's going to replace plutonium, and it's going to replace uh, uranium in these, in these fucking bombs that are pretty well-sized, and it's going to reduce the size of the bombs, and it's going to make them more available if they can start producing this shit. And this is really going to be the bomb that destroys the Earth, too. I mean, it, it's just more more powerful, more powerful, and more destructive. That's all they want. This is going to be the one that fucks everybody, though, if they are ever able to develop it. If we don't blow ourselves up before then, because believe me, we have plenty of plutonium to do that already. We don't need anything new. But these are all new elements that are being released. This was all planned. Nothing is random. We don't know how to control this shit. We can't clean up Fuk Ch Chernobyl or Fukushima. It's going to destroy the planet. We can't fucking clean it up. God forbid there's another couple plants that go off somewhere like Pakistan or India where I mean the world is really fucked at that point but re remember nothing lives here nothing lives in this in this area that's radioactive nothing nothing devoid of life and nothing will ever live there for a very long time very maybe never maybe never but we got to remember the cognitive and psychological and psychiatric effects of ionizing radiation exposure even in low doses this makes people fucking nuts insane is insanity is contagious and um, this help this gives a path for those insane thoughts to take hold those insane thoughts you get from television and entertainment and all the crazy shit that's just going on today and information they just make a path through your fucking brain and, and all reasonable thought is just fucking thrown out the fucking window and your in your brain is, is flooded with this propaganda and you accept it because right now your cognitive abilities are lowered. Everybody's mind is, everybody's is, because of these chemicals. And it's all leading to one fucking thing. Ba-boom. yippee doo da and we're going to accept this. Now, um, this is out of Wikipedia. A screening program in 2012 found more than one, than a third, 36% of children in, Fukush in the Fukushima prefecture had abnormal growths in their thyroid glands. This is 2012. In 2013, there have been more than 40 children newly diagnosed with thyroid cancer in Fukushima Prefecture. In 2015, the number of thyroid cancers or detectors, detections of developing thyroid cancers numbered in 137. However, these Incidents of cancer are elevate, elevated above the rate in uncontaminated areas. Because every area, that's the thing, is every, we're all been, have been exposed to this. They call it uncontaminated areas, but we've still been highly exposed to this shit. That's why the cancer rates are higher. 
in these what they're calling uncontaminated areas. Cancer rates are higher everywhere. Everywhere around me, cancer rates are higher. All my neighbors seem to have fucking cancer. Believe it or not. I mean, all around me. And um, I just wonder how common that is. But I know a lot of people have it. A lot of people are contracting it. And I blame it on this. a lot of this radiation exposure that we're experiencing. They say, oh, it's environmental. It's the water. It's the food. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. But there's a pathway that makes this possible, and I believe it's the radiation that's in the environment that's making this possible. And this is just all part of it, you guys. This is all part of it. This this technology was brought about by, you know, these fallen angels that came in, into man, and they showed him how to, you know, build these uh, technologies, this metallurgy and, and, and chemistry, and... Um, and how to make weapons of war. You know, that's what they did. You know, men as a whole, we just want to, you know, farm, have some chickens, do some trading, you know, have a good discussions. Nobody really wants war. Who wants the war? Are the, the leaders, the people that are supposedly in charge of everything, the people that we entrusted, we voted into office to, I mean, we put them there because they're supposed to deal with this stuff. It's just more war, more war, more crazy stuff going on. Look, I don't care how much money you have or what your position is. You're just as affected by this stuff as everybody. Although, i got to tell you something. Um, there's, more, there's more to it than what is being directed by just a human influence. That's all I have to say. And this is Duck Out.